Hello, my name is Leo, and welcome again to a new day of the Elder Scrolls Arena. It's been a while since I actually did just a fast traveling vlog video, and you know what? I've actually missed them because I've been making like episodes that have been far too long. Like, I think most of the episodes I made in the last week, or the last, you know, what, however long I was staying in Dunkoi Walk for, were all about an hour or over an hour long. I think yesterday's was, I, I think I had it down to like 30 minutes. I think the one before that was 30 minutes too, because I, I started just doing looting and, and not what I was doing in earlier episodes, which was doing little missions and just spending as much time as I could. Uh, you also might have noticed yesterday uh, in my uh, Shut and Play, I got my hands on a new piece of ebony armor. Uh, I mean, I, I guess you could call it my first real piece of ebony armor because, um, I mean, the first piece of ebony armor I got was, I think it was the belt? I can't remember, I'd have to check. I think it was the belt that I got. So, you know, it's not really visible, but I got, you know, I got an ebony shoulder piece now, which I actually noticed was, was useful because the tower shield that I've got, um, covers, like, it increases the defense rating of every part of the body except for that shoulder and the feet. So at the moment, the lowest, um, the least armored part of my body is now my feet. But, you know, it's not that bad. It's like 20 compared to, I think, 24 is the second worst. So, you know, we're doing all right. But it is Monday, um... And uh, what that what does that mean? That means there's a new series of videos today. Well, not really exactly. More Salvador the Gunzerker, Borderlands 2. Do it. I heard an interesting thing the other day that apparently uh, Borderlands 2 is now free on the American PSN. I think what that actually means is they're talking about PlayStation Plus. Not that that means anything to me because I don't buy into PlayStation Plus, but... You know, I, I guess that's nice. Not that I care, I already have the game and most of the DLC. I haven't bought any of the new Headhunter stuff, because what's the friggin' point? I haven't even made it past it. all the other, the, the oh, like, I haven't made it past, I haven't even started the second DLC yet. Let alone the third and the fourth. So, um, yeah, we got some work to do. But, you know, we'll, we'll get there, slowly, little, little by little. But uh, I want to talk about something today. Actually, was, was that, was, did I finish everything that I wanted to talk about? Was there anything else that I wanted to talk about? Uh, it's cold. Uh, I've had a really bad cough for like the past friggin' four days. I mean, it's finally gone. We'll see. Maybe, maybe I'll suddenly start coughing. I've got a bit of a <clears throat> in my throat, but apart from that, it's okay. I like chucked up a whole bunch of phlegm this morning. It was disgusting. Oh my god. It's gross. Anyway, moving on. Um, so yeah, I do apologize. I think yesterday... Uh, yesterday wasn't so bad, I think. Well, considering it was a shut-up, I could just cough my lungs out and continue to play the game. But I think Saturday was a problem where I was just... Uh, I'll, I'll go behind the curtain there. And what I was doing is half the time, I would stop playing. I would mute the mic. And then I'd just cough my lungs out and then come back. Um... Yeah, no way professional, but what what can I what can I do? So, you know, what are you gonna do about it? Um, anyway, uh, moving on. There's something I want to talk about today, and it's actually going to be a bit of a long topic because I've been thinking about it a lot these past couple of days. So, well, it's a thing that I, it's a thing that's been in my mind for a long time. Now, I don't know about you. But every now and again, I have fantasies, right? Just fantasies about stuff. One of my first fantasies was, it's a pretty basic one. It's, you know, you find a genie and you get your three wishes, you know, Aladdin style. Um, you know, that, that's, that's pretty basic. Now, uh, Americans probably won't know this. Australians probably won't unless you were around when this ad was on. One of the very early Tim Tam ads in Australia. Now, Tim Tams, you don't know what Tim Tams are. They're these little chocolate biscuits. They're basically, I think it's two pieces of rectangular shaped wafer uh, joined together with like a chocolatey mixture. And they're just covered 
completely in chocolate. They're delicious. Um, they're real popular over here in Japan because, well, you can actually buy them in Japan now. Those and Tim Tams. But, no, sorry. I, we're talking about Tim Tams. Sorry. Kit Kats. Kit Kats. Yeah, have a break, have a Kit Kat, yeah. Um, but I'm pretty sure you can buy them here now, but anyway. But they're more expensive, yeah. Uh, my mum actually bought me, or oh, sent me, mailed over a couple of packets of Tim Tams. And I just freaking went nuts on them because they're great. Anyway, back in the day there was this ad. This ad is basically, it's a genie story, so it's where this whole thing comes from. Uh, I think it's three girls, three, you know, young you know, maybe college student girls just hanging out in their apartment slash house, whatever the hell they're doing, that they're all living together in, eating Tim Tams, right? And I believe there was a man there, and he was portrayed as a bit of a doofus guy that they don't really want to be there. Anyway, they open up this packet of Tim Tams. No, 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 they find a lamp. That's right, they find a lamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they find a lamp, and Ginny pops out, right? And Ginny's like this dude, just a really muscly type, nice looking dude. I think he was, I think he was African American. Yes, he was. He was dark skinned. I remember that. Because the, the girls were swooning over him, whatever. Anyway, so the Ginny guy goes, okay, you got three wishes, get on with it. Like, he literally is like, you got three wishes, do it. <laughs> so I think. One of the dumbass girls, that's right, yeah, one of the dumbass girls goes, I want, shit, I want to be on a, like, a desert island or something, and then she gets shot off to a desert island. Um, the, the guy goes, I guess he's in love with her, uh, I want to, I want to be with her, so he, poof, goes off, and then the, the, the and then the genie's like, all right, what do you want for your third wish? And the girl's like, I want a packet of Tim Tams that never run out. And then he goes, click. And then the Tim Tams, that was like, there's like two, no, it was empty. Yeah, the, the packet was empty. Just instantly refills itself magically with Tim Tams. And that's when I got to thinking, right? Obviously, I wouldn't use my wish to wish for a packet of Tim Tams that never run out. But what if you could wish for a wallet? that always had a hundred dollar bill in it. So when you take out that hundred dollar bill, it instantly regenerates another hundred dollar bill. And this is where my long standing tradition, or fantasy, whatever, of things that would allow me to have as much money as I could possibly want. <laughs> right, so the what I'm talking about is Groundhog Day. Okay, now, if you haven't seen the movie Groundhog Day with Bill Murray, you should probably go see it. It's not a bad movie, honestly. It's actually a pretty decent movie. And it's where this new fantasy, this new fantasy that I'm talking about came from. Now, in Groundhog Day, Bill Murray is a weather reporter, blah, blah, blah. The point is, he's like, a, he's a bit of a douche. He's, a, he's got a bit of an ego. And whatever, things happen. He wakes up... Uh, one morning where he's got to do the, he's got, he goes to this area where he has to do this dumb segment that he doesn't want to do. He wakes up, he gets dressed, blah, blah, goes out, does the thing, gets home, comes home, goes to sleep, right? The next morning, he wakes up and the exact same song that was playing yesterday was playing. I'm just basically just going to tell the entire story of freaking Groundhog Day. Um, and that's weird, it's the same song. Uh, and then, and then the people, the, the, you know, the, the talkback guys start talking, and they're saying the same thing, and he's like, oh, guys, you're playing the same tape again, implying that maybe they were, they record what they, you know, talk about, but then he goes outside, and there was a blizzard, that's right, he wanted to, they wanted to leave the day before, but there was a blizzard, and they got stuck, so he looks outside, and it's, yes, there's snow, but it's not a blizzard anymore, it's just snow. And he's like, wait a minute, this is the exact same thing that it was yesterday. And he goes outside, and people are greeting him and talking to him in the exact same way and manner that they did yesterday. 
basically he's entered a time portal or time a time vortex where he's repeating the same day over and over again and for him it's a nightmare because he can't get out of it he starts you know taking advantage of it uses it to learn stuff about like some chick and then you know uses that knowledge to get in the pants he does other things, but then he, you know, decides that he's going to use it for good. He starts rescuing kids that are falling out of trees, saving old man, even though old man die, continues to die despite his efforts, things like that. And then he, and then he gets really depressed and starts killing himself, and then, boom, he wakes up the next morning and it's all over again. I think at one point he's, he confesses that he, um, that he's in this situation to like his co co anchor or whatever um, co worker uh, and says that you know I've killed myself in like many different ways like fried electrocuted you know stabbed shot blah 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 and you know really freaked him out and then it, I, I can't remember how it ended but basically he turns into a super nice guy really good makes everyone happy and then he breaks the curse and then he lives on his life now I don't know about you. But as far as, I guess it would get boring after a while, and it would turn into hell. Well, not hell, more like purgatory. But, you know, the ability to just relive the same day over and over again. Imagine, okay? Now, I don't know who you are. I know who I am. But, you know, most, most of us, you know, we work. We work, maybe we go to school. I don't know, whatever. Most people, when they wake up in the morning... They would rather not go to work or go to school or do whatever, you know, obligation that they have to do to society to th that day. They would rather, you know, let's say Sunday, yeah? You got Sunday, you wake up, you, you wake up at like noon, which I don't get to do anymore because I'm living in Japan. But anyway, you wake up at noon, you just, you sleep in, you do whatever you want, and then you go to sleep, right? Imagine if you could, like, selectively choose Sunday to be your Groundhog Day, right? So you could just, you could just, you know, do whatever you wanted. And it would be every day. Even if it was a weekday, even if you had to go to work, just don't go. Call, call your boss up, tell him to go fuck himself. Or not. Right? Just unplug all the phones, just chill out, do whatever you want. Right? You could do that because there are no consequences now. Right? Because tomorrow it'll be today and you'll just do it again and again and again and again. Now, here's another thing, and this is where the money th money side comes in. Money isn't really an object. Assuming that you have a decent amount of money in your bank account or in your home loan redraw or whatever. Like as long as you can get money in some fashion within that twenty four hour period. You could buy whatever you want. Like, let's say, you know, you got, I don't know, well, most people don't have $20,000 in the bank. But if you got a home loan or, or you could probably just get a, a, a car loan, right, on the day. Some some areas, you know, with super high interest, who gives a fuck, right? And you just get this, you just get this car loan, right? And you just buy a Dodge Viper GTS, or you buy like a Mercedes, well, not a Mercedes, who cares? Or a Porsche, or or a Lamborghini, or whatever. Crash it into something. Who gives a damn? You know what I mean? Just do whatever the hell you wanted, because the next day, right, the loan won't exist anymore. Your read, like the extra money that you took out of your home loan, won't e won't be taken out anymore. The assuming you actually spend it out of your bank account, the money will be back in there. You could eat, you know, McDonald's every day. You could go to, like, a fancy steak restaurant, assuming you can get a booking, every day. You could just ride around in a taxi every day. Who cares? I never ride taxis because they're expensive. But if I've got an unlimited supply of money, yeah, I'm going to use a taxi. Right? You know, I mean, just imagine it. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. Right? Here's where I start breaking the rules. Okay, so first of all, I've established we can choose the day that we can Groundhog Day, right? Well, what if you could choose the day and the 
the duration of the Groundhog time. So, for example, uh, I book a week holiday at work, or a month's holiday at work, and I start it from the first day of my holiday, and I finish it at the last day of my holiday. So, I've actually got 30 days. What, what does this mean? Well, it means you can actually go out and, like, you know, meet people, like, and have, like, engaging conversations with people. The first one's really a super loner thing. Because you can't really, apart from like, if you just got friends that come over, like Avo Jack just come over and play video games. Yeah, but apart from like playing different video games the next day, it's going to get really boring really quickly. You know what I mean? And you can't, you can't, you, like if you were single, you couldn't start a relationship. Unless it's a one night stand. Which, yeah, I mean, you could, but it's not, you know, you, you could never engage like a real relationship with someone you know, in, you know, one day, or one 24-hour period. Now, here's, here's the next level, okay? Because, for me, this fantasy, okay, as far as money is concerned, it's great. Don't have to worry about money ever again. Well, more or less. Yeah, more or less. It's, it's true, it's more, more or less, you don't have to worry about money ever again. Especially if it's only a day. True, yes, right. So, uh, but... One problem is, let's say I want to play a video game. Yeah, I want to play some Borderlands 2. Because I like Borderlands 2. I like playing with Salvador the Gun Zerka. There's a video out. I already said that. There's a video out there. Go, go watch it. Borderlands 2, do it. Uh, or I want to play Arena, you know? Well, if I play, let's say I play Borderlands 2. And I play one hour of Borderlands 2. Let, 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 as if I do that, if I, it was a Sunday. Okay, I play 12 hours of Borderlands 2, for example, yeah? Save the game, go to bed, wake up. Oh, those 12 hours of gameplay is now completely gone because the PlayStation's reset itself back to the previous day. So what does that mean? Well, okay, you can play, you know, you can watch movies. That's, f I assume you can get your hands on them. You can watch all the movies you can want. Uh, you can play games that are like, you know, you can finish in a day, like, uh, you know, Metal Sword games or Animushes, you know, those kind of games. You can, you can play games that don't really require saves. You can play Dive Kick. Um, and if you were playing online, you'd end up playing the same guy every day. That would be so interesting, actually. I just thought of that. Imagine if you're playing Dive Kick, yeah? And you, you, okay, so you start playing the game at exactly 6 p.m., right? And at exactly, well, no, you start playing the game whenever, right? But exactly 6 p.m., uh, Joe Bloggs 58 comes online and joins your game, and you have a match, yeah? And you, you know, you you play, you play, you play a game. I'm playing as the Baz. He's playing as I don't know, Redacted, whatever. And then you know, maybe I win a couple, and he wins one. Right? The next day, you, you're, you're online, and at 6 p.m., he joins your game. But this time, instead of playing the Baz, I play as Redacted, and he plays as someone else. It'll be an entirely different game. Same guy. That's true. But, but no, the real thing, the real kicker is, think of this, I still pick the Baz, and he still picks Redacted, and we play the game out in the same fashion. But I change my move a little bit. Well, that would be boring, you know. Because you'd understand what he's about to do. So you would then counter it the next day. And eventually you'd get too good that you just beat him. That's true. You just you just memorize his moves. Kind of like, I think that's, that's one of the things that sort of happens in Groundhog Day. That's true. But anyway, the point I'm trying to say here is, apart from those type of games... You wouldn't be able to play with any game that, like, really uses a memory card or, or saves, you know, saves the game. It, it, like, saves progress. You wouldn't be able to. And this is where my next sort of bending the rule comes in. Okay. You can choose one thing, although recently I've been thinking about multiple things, but you can choose one item or thing that you can take with you back in time to the previous day. So... 
back when I first had this idea, it was PlayStation 2 era. So we're talking about memory cards, right? So you save your game onto your memory card. You take your memory card, right, in your hand, and you go back. So you've got the memory card with your, you know, 12 hours of gameplay of Onimusha Warlords. Why would you have that? Um, and then you plug it in and you can continue your progress, right? That's That's how you would do it. And, I mean, in this day and age with your PlayStation 3s and your Xbox 360s, and, well, let's face it, we're already in the next generation of PS4s and, and uh, Xbones, you, you don't save the game to a memory card. You save it to the hard drive. So what do you do there? Well, I guess you could you guess you guess could bring back the whole console. Or, well, it's, it's kind of sketchy depending on the console and the game. But sometimes you could, you know, transfer it to a, you know, a memory card. Uh, not a memory card, a uh, you know USB stick. You can take that back, you know. But this is where I get into a bit of a paradox. Okay, let, let's keep it simple. Let's talk about PS2 memory cards. Okay, so I've got PS2 memory card. Yeah, I, I play 12 hours of Onimusha Warlords. Why is it Onimusha Warlords? Whatever, Onimusha Five. It's, it's not even a game that exists. Onimusha Three. Okay, so I play 12 hours of Onimusha Three. Right, which is like start finish the game. It's irrelevant, but whatever. I take the memory card, right? I go back in time, got the memory card in my hand, like the, the memory card with the twelve hours of gameplay on it. The old memory card without the twelve hours of gameplay is still in my PlayStation 2. So now I've got two memory cards. One that's old, one that's twenty four hours old, and one that's twenty four hours young. Right? So, memory cards, no, not a big deal. I guess you can just chuck it out, throw it out. What about consoles? Think about that for a moment. Right? So, you got your PlayStation 3, yeah? You play, you play, you know, you play 12 hours. Let's, let's make it 10. You play 10 hours of Borderlands, yeah? Then, you grab your PlayStation. You save it. And by save it, I mean you keep it to go back in time with. You wake up the next morning, you got your PlayStation 3 with the 10 hours of gameplay and the other one, right? So you'd have to rip out the old one, plug in the new one so you can continue your progress. Then you've got this extra PlayStation. What do you do with it? Well, I guess you just chuck it in the bin, I, I suppose. What else are you going to do with it? But then the next morning, Right, you're gonna you're gonna grab and save it again, and then you're gonna have three PlayStations. You're gonna have the original one that's in the in the TV cabinet. You're gonna have the other one that you saved. Maybe it's on the coffee table, and then you've got the new new one that's in your hands. This is gonna get awkward, especially if you need to like take like twenty PlayStation threes down to the local dumpster to chuck them out. What happens if someone sees these PlayStation 3s? It's going to be sort of odd. And eventually, that dumpster's going to be full of PlayStation 3s. And then what are you going to do? This is where I, 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 I get confused. And I, I'm not sure where to really go with this fantasy. What if... What if I got my PlayStation 3, right? I play 10 hours of Borderlands 2. I save the PlayStation while it's in the TV cabinet, right? So it's saved in, the, like it's kept. I call, it, I call it saved or kept or whatever. I freeze it in the TV cabinet. So the next morning, right, the new PlayStation 3 is already in the TV cabinet plugged in. What about the old one? Does it, do they like clip into each other? Or... Does, do they just, do they do like, you know, Sky, what Skyrim does when things like clip into each other? They just go spazzing out and jump, fly all over the place, all over my apartment? Do they, does the old one just simply ex cease to exist? That's probably the best and neatest option because it means that the old one doesn't exist anymore. And I guess that's nice. Cool. Okay. What if you accidentally have the PlayStation? Let's say you got the PlayStation and you got a 360 and they're right next to each other. And you got the PlayStation and it's 
a little bit too far to the right and it's sort of encroaching in where the Xbox used to be. So when you go back in time, now the Xbox doesn't actually exist anymore. And it's gone forever, including your saves. That's scary shit. I guess you'd have to be really careful. Maybe you'd make that mistake the first time and never make it again. Something like that. It also got me to thinking. I've changed the configuration of my apartment a few times. I've moved the couches around and I've actually uh, renovated my kitchen so it's actually a proper kitchenette instead of a, the dodgy thing that I had before. I would prefer to have the nice kitchenette. I would also prefer to have a much older version of my couch where the, uh, the padding isn't sort of sunken in so when I sit in it I like sink into the couch and it makes it sort of uncomfortable. I want it to be more perky. So, it gets confusing. It gets confusing because let's say I go back to, let's say I go back six months before I came to Japan, yeah? And then uh, I save most of the apartment, right? Except for the couch, because I want the older couch, okay? And then I go back. But I go back too far and the configuration's different. So the couch that I want, the old one, is now clipping through other objects and it no longer exists. So I just I just realized I skipped over something. So we talked we talked about being able to, you know, continue the same day over and over again, even the same month over and over again, or any time that you any time period that you can choose. Also you can keep items like you can save the state of a particular item and take it back with you in the previous time period i'm also talking about not just saying i want a groundhog day from today i want to go back in time tata style back to say you know six months ago or three years ago something like that um because you know why not? What you would do, and this would be awesome, uh, I'd wait until like February, March next year, when uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain comes out, buy it, buy a PS4, buy an X-Bone, buy, you know, any other games I want, buy maybe the, the top-notch TV from that era, and a nice laptop, I guess, nice computer, whatever, and then save that stuff, and then go back to like 2009, whenever I first bought my apartment, and, and just have that stuff in, so have like next gen consoles, when the previous gen has only just started, have a PlayStation 4, when like people are still excited about PlayStation 3 about to come out, that'd be awesome, that'd be so good. Ah, oh, it'd be so great. Of course, you couldn't tell anyone. Otherwise, you'd be fucked. Like, I couldn't start a YouTube channel because I just realized I'm going back further, like, before I actually started a YouTube channel. But I couldn't start a YouTube channel and, and like, have gameplay of my PlayStation 4. Because one of two things could happen. One, I could get in a world of trouble. Pl Sony PlayStation could eat me alive. You know, having having this having this information or having this uh, device. Second thing is, it might actually affect the development of the PlayStation 4, and it might change. They might change it because they've realised that well, some guy on YouTube has this weird thing and he's calling it a PlayStation 4. And then what happens if they change it? They make it better or they make it worse. Then my PlayStation which I bought from the future, would then change as well. Ooh, mind blown. Time paradox is all over the shop. But the other cool thing, and this is where we come back to money, right? So I already talked about how money's not an object when you're in Groundhog Day because, you know, the next day you'd have the money back. What about this, right? What if I get a loan, yeah? What if I get a loan for, say... $100,000, okay, and I take $100,000 out in cash, right, in a nifty little silver suitcase, and I take that home. 
Then I save it. I freeze that suitcase with all the money inside it. And then go back to the previous day. The loan no longer exists. But I've got $100,000 in cash. Right? Maybe I shouldn't be telling all this. Because what happens if I do actually get this ability? You know what? If you do get this ability, you go back in time to before you release this video. And you never release this video. Good idea. So, clearly, by you listening to this, I'm not living this fantasy. Damn it. <laughs> Finally. But anyway, so you go back in time, loan no longer exists, but you got $100,000 cash. You get the same loan again. Get another $100,000 suitcase. Save both suitcases and go back. Do this as many times as you want. Have just an apartment full of money. Then, and this is where it gets kind of tricky. Okay, this is where it gets difficult. You you would want to put that money into the bank, right? You'd want to take your little suitcases down and deposit it into the bank. One thing I would like to do is pay off my home loan. Now, this is where it gets tricky. Because, I don't know, I, I've never worked at a bank. I would assume that if a man takes a suitcase full of $100,000 into a regular bank, branch and says I want to put this money into my account and pay off my home loan I'm sure they're going to check that right they're going to be just a little bit suspicious surely um, let's say it's not a hundred thousand dollars because I'd say that's probably a bit too much let's say it's 20 grand yeah so you do 20 grand you do it five times you got a hundred grand right here's the thing that you didn't realize when you first did this the first time. And it's okay, because you can always go back in time, even if you get in trouble with the cops or whatever, and try again if you make a mistake. But think about it this way. You've done this five times, yeah? But you did it the same branch, right? Same people. So each set of $20,000 is identical, meaning the numbers, the identification numbers on each banknote are the same. Right. Obviously, each twenty thousand is made up of different notes, but there are five of every different note in the thing, and I'm sure they've got some sort of a machine that actually like scans each banknote to see what number it is, and they're gonna find out that you've done this. So here's what you do. It's very simple. You go to different branches. So one day you do it at your local branch. The next day you do it at a branch in town. The next day you do it at a branch over there. And you just, you just keep doing it until you've got as much money as you want or as much money as you can from as many branches as you can get to. And then you just put it all in the bank. That's probably still going to be suspicious. But, I mean, what you could just do is, because you don't have to pay off your home loan. It's not necessary. You just need to put cash into your bank account per each month to pay off your home loan, to pay off any other electricity, internet bills that you have. And, and then that's it. Just keep the home loan there. Just, well, why cancel it? You know? And then just, they, I was almost said play the game. And then just play your life out for uh, as many years as you want to. And then just save your things that you want to keep, like your PlayStations and whatever. And then just go back again. And do it all over again. And just keep doing that. You would become immortal. Because here's the thing I didn't mention, right? When you go back, you go back to a previous, like I was saying with the couch. I want an old couch that's, you know, not more springy and, and easier to sit on. So when I go back in time, like three years, it'll be my body three years ago, right? So if I suddenly develop cancer or something, I go back and I no longer have cancer, you know? This is a really great idea if, if you ever get cancer. You just prolong your death for it indefinitely. Um, but so it'll be, it'll be your old body with your thoughts and memories and, and, and whatnot. Can you imagine how great that would be? Oh my god. So what I'm thinking of is, uh, I go back, um, I save, you know, any saved data or hard drive stuff that I've got on, you know, a little portable hard drive, um, USB sticks, it's got my PS, PS3 and Xbox saves on it, or maybe just the console itself, I don't know, whatever. Uh, no, you know what, I want to put it onto a stick, because I want to buy a 
better PlayStation, like one with a bigger hard drive, because the hard drive's full right now, and it's always full. It's always got to be full now. Because <laughs> I bought more games off of PSN than I actually have hard drive space. It's a pain in the butt. Anyway, uh, you got your memory cards. Uh, you got any games that you want to keep, like all these Japanese games that I've bought while I was over here. Then you go back. You go all the way back to whatever you want. You can even go back further than when I bought my apartment. Go back to maybe when I graduated high school. Yeah. Uh, I guess, or you could, you could even do it when I graduated university, I suppose. And then just, yeah. Just set, set your shit up, right? Then lock that, ti lock that time. Or maybe make a memo for yourself for that particular day, right? Or roughly, anyway. And then just live out your life. And then just do whatever you want. Now, what would be nice, also, is if I could go forward in time. Now I'm talking about time travel. So if I can go not only back, but I can go forward. So I go forward 50 years when the PlayStation 99 is out. And I buy that. You know. And then I come back. And I can't play it because it won't work on my primitive friggin' LCD TV. So you buy whatever TV is from the future. It's probably some VR shit. That'd be great. Something that like, like embeds into your mind. Like, like, a, like Google Glass, not just Google Glasses, something like a chip on, like, the side of your forehead that just feeds the images directly into your, um, directly into your uh, eyeballs. So you would just see it like you would normally see anything. Oh, that'd be so great. That'd be so freaking awesome. Because nobody would know. No. And the, and the PlayStation 4 is also the size of a small microchip. <laughs> And all the games that you want, all the games that you buy, are all digital downloads that are stored on the chip. Which, yeah, is kind of sucky, because it means you can only download it, you know, as many games that'll fit on the hard drive. Unless the hard drive is your brain. I don't know if my brain's ready for that shit. Because <laughs> this technology could be based on a human brain that's evolved 50 years from now. Might not be the same as my brain. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We ain't talking about 50 years, dude. I'm not talking about, like, a millennium. I guess, but anyway. But yeah, that's basically my fantasy. All the money you can want. All the games, worldly objects you can want. Go back in time. Buy a car. Drive around in it. Oh, I cut my arm off. Or I got shot. Assuming you don't die, because then you'd be dead and you wouldn't be able to go back. Oh, my arm got cut off by a... I don't know. Cyrax blade. Uh, I'll just go back, and then my arm's back. Yeah, and I'll just remember not to go anywhere near that friggin' Cyrax! <laughs> Son of a bitch, Cyrax with his stupid circular saws. Did Cyrax actually have saws? Wait, which one was Cyrax? It was the yellow one, right? Yeah, the yellow one was the one with the saws, I think. What was the red one? He, um... Not Pyro, but he did have, um... Um... Flame power. Anyway, whatever. I friggin' ranted on long enough. Let's, uh... Let's end this here. And when we come back, we'll be fast travelling our way to... The next town... Whatever town that is. But for now, my name is Leo, and I'll see you next time.